Thank you. Marie, firstly, explain to us uh, the whole concept of this freelance economy. What is it all about and, and does it work? The freelance economy are all of those people who are working outside of the current status quo. So they're independent contractors who are working for several clients rather than being contracted to a single employer. If you see an employer as a client, rather have several clients than just one. That's the the basic premise of the freelance economy. Mm -hmm. Now, how easy is it to enter the, the formal economy or the job market as a freelancer, especially if you're an inexperienced school leaver? It's not easy. I think we must be quite clear that it's not a cure-all for unemployment. However, it's no more difficult to be a freelancer than it is to find permanent employment in today's economy. So that's really the key message that's in the economy that we're experiencing right now, in many ways it makes more sense to pursue a freelance career than it does to pursue permanent employment in an organization somewhere where your future is actually not as secure as you think it might be. Not like about 50 so for, years ago, for right? Not like 50 years ago, that, that concept of a job for life is really mm -hmm. becoming like the dodo. It, if you think about where our parents were compared to where we are, um, a job for life was something they strove for. We just are not in that same place. We don't work in that same context. No big, uh, and so as workers, we need to be more dynamic and flexible in our approach mm. to work. Now, how big of a trend is freelancing in our country uh, compared to other developing countries? Mm. To be, compared to other BRICS nations, for example, we are actually lagging behind. So self-employed workers in this country make up sort of five, it's a 5% um, sort of, they, they're 10% of the population I think it is, mm -hmm. uh, of the working population. Um, whereas in other BRICS nations it's much higher. India and China, uh, Brazil and Russia, those are the other, the other BRICS nations. So we're lagging behind them. Brazil's at 15% for example. They're ahead of the pack. Um, and then you get the, the rest at 11%. At so we've got some way to go to catch up to them. Um, America is where, if you look for sort of forward trends, what's happening, look to America where one in three workers is now a freelance worker. And by the year 2020, they're projecting that it'll be one in two. So half of the workforce will actually be a freelancer. So it's something which is trending throughout the world and we are going to be seeing a lot more of it here in this country as the years go by. How significant is the input of the freelancer in the workplace? It's a very significant um, input. Just here this morning I've met quite a few freelancers. The makeup artist is a freelancer, the cameraman's a freelancer. So within this building um, of, of people that I've met this morning, I've already interacted with more freelancers than you might have done 10 years ago, which you know, in your own field becomes interesting. Um, and I think people need to take more cognizance of them and respect them a lot more for the contribution that they're making. And that is, I think, the key that I was trying to, to push across in that article I wrote, is that they're not just a sort of marginal force, they're actually becoming more of the norm than they are sort of a minority. Mm -hmm. Now, there are always pros and cons uh, into freelancing. Uh, can, can, you, can you list some of them? That's, that's quite easy. Um, the pros, I would put that across as freedom. And the cons is responsibility. And there's always that balance you've got to strike between freedom and, respo and responsibility. So freedom is you can dictate where you work, how you work, your hours, um, the processes and procedures your own branding, what you want to do, be your own boss. That's the freedom part. But then on the flip side is the responsibility. You're responsible solely for yourself. You don't have an organization to fall back on or to rely on as when you are employed. And you've got responsibility to pay your bills every month, even if your clients haven't paid you. And that's one of the huge challenges facing freelancers. And then when you grow and you become responsible for other people, that's also a huge burden in a way to be when you take on employees, that you're not mm -hmm. just responsible for yourself, 
but for other people as well. So it's that balance between freedom and responsibility. So how do you protect yourself as a freelancer against financial ruin? You've just got to keep plugging away at it. There's um, no greater kind of, if you think about working for an employee, employer in today's economy, what guarantees do you really have? Downsizing is a reality, retrenchments happen across the board very frequently. So financial ruin is something that you could face as an employee and as a freelancer. Mm. For me anyway, it makes more sense to be earning your money from different sources than it does from just one uh, person. Mm. I would say the biggest thing is, especially if you're starting out as a freelancer and you're looking to build a business, is delayed gratification. So don't go out and buy a huge, fancy, expensive car, buy something smaller and modest, use the money you're saving to plow back into your business or to further your studies. And that's something which young people, especially today, battle with, delayed gratification. Now, then I've, the other yes. part is b busting your debt. Mm -hmm. Don't carry too much debt. Again, save that money and plow it back into your business or back into furthering your, your studies and upskilling yourself. Now, unfortunately, freelancers often get the short end of the stick when it comes to layoffs uh, mm. because they are seen as cheap labor as well. Uh, how does one then promote yes. oneself uh, and act as a valuable uh, professional regardless of, of what others think? That's a fault that too many freelancers have is they don't respect themselves, they don't act professionally and actually portray themselves as a proper business. So as a freelancer, you're a, you're a one-man band and you actually need to act professionally. I would suggest building an, a strong online presence, start a website, start a blog, use social media sites to engage with other people in your, in your industry, colleagues as well as potential clients. By doing that, you're building some kind of credibility around your name, you're building your own brand name, if you will. Also build your portfolio, try and work with the kind of clients that others will look at and look up to. So be careful of the sort of work that you take on, that's, that's quite important. So you want to kind of showcase strong clients or jobs or projects in your, in your portfolio. And act professionally, this is something some freelancers struggle with. Mm -hmm. It's a real job, a real career. So really act like it is and treat it as such. Get up in the morning early, get dressed. If you work at a home office, make sure that you in that home office by eight o'clock ready to go. Portray at all times the most professional of images. Get a, a landline if you can instead of just a cell phone number so that you appear more credible. It's all those little tricks of the trade. You've really got to tout yourself as being a business, not just a freelancer. Marie, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. And that's from our Durban studios, Marie Rocher, director of Marie Rocher Copper Writing.